Good morning, everyone. My name is Jim Rosen. I am a former actor. I hate to say former, but when you're an actor and uh, work doesn't come, you're a former actor, I should say. Uh, also a former television writer for the Quincy series, which is my next book coming out next month. And uh, I've been doing these books for the past two years. Route 66 was the first one. Then came Naked City. They were both done by Herbert B. Leonard. They were groundbreaking shows and uh, very unique and I wanted to do them. And then I did Wagon Train last year because it was one of my favorite westerns. And uh, then this book came along. So let's talk about Adventures in Paradise. It was on the air for three seasons from 1959 to 1962. It was produced by Martin Manulis and Dominic Dunn, the late Dominic Dunn, who sadly passed away yesterday. He was the executive producer of the first season. Then William Self, who later became head of television production, Fox was the executive producer for the second and third year. Um, Adventures in Paradise was inspired by James Michener. It was a concept that he presented. He originally wrote the idea in the 1940s, but never really found anyone he wanted to give it to. And in the meantime, he had great success, Tales of the South Pacific, and uh, he wrote a number of, of, of movies throughout the 1950s. And finally, in the late 1950s, he happened to be with the same agency that Martin Manulis was with. Martin Manulis had done Playhouse 90, and he was a very prestigious producer. And he uh, left Playhouse 90 and became the head of television production at 20th Century Fox. 20th Century Fox was a great movie lot. It was one of my favorite movie lots when I lived in L.A. And it was located just west of Beverly Hills. And it had a back lot, which was uh, an amazing back lot. 230 acres of sets. Not counting the front part of the lot, which had all the sound stages and more sets. And uh, that is where this, the series was filmed. Uh, in any event, it was a very easy uh, sale because uh, you had the same agent representing James Michener and Martin Manulis. So Manulis was able to read the treatment that Michener submitted. He liked it very much. Michener trusted Martin Manulis because of his reputation in Playhouse 90. And, and a deal was made. Uh, there's been, I think, misinformation that uh, James Michener was unhappy with the way it was done and dropped out of the project. And that's inaccurate. What happened was, James Michener sold the concept to television, and then Martin Manulis developed it for a television series. Uh, at that point, James Michener no longer had anything to do with the project. In fact, shortly after the debut of Adventures of Paradise in the fall of 1959, he had the book of Hawaii coming out. And then he was planning to go to Mexico uh, to do research for his next book. And then he also had a commitment in Russia. So he was not someone that was going to be available to work on a television series from the get-go. So that's important, I think, to understand that he made the deal. The treatment was sold. They used his name above the title. But in reality, once it was sold to the studio, uh, Martin Manulis developed it with Dominic Dunn and Peter Nelson, who was the associate producer. And writers were assigned and scripts were developed. And maybe one or two stories of James Michener that he had suggested were used. An episode called The Black Pearl, which I believe he wrote the, uh, had, had a story, one of his stories, they based it on that story. Um, that particular episode, but for the most part, uh, he has he was gone from the show. It had nothing. It no longer had anything to do with it. Um, they cast Gardner McKay in the part of Adam Troy, um, the captain of the schooner Tiki. The concept was that this was a boat that would travel throughout the South Seas to big islands, small islands. Uh, there would be action, adventure, there was a, a limitless boundary of all of the people that he would meet. He would be transporting cargo and people. And 
uh, it really created a wide arena, the fact that he could go to a very primitive island, yet he could also land in a very civilized island. So that was the basic concept. And uh, the background was that uh, the character of Adam Troy was a Korean War veteran. He was injured in the war. He uh, met up with a man named Oliver Wendell Key, a Chinese American who was also a uh, war veteran. They were both convalescing, they were both wounded in Hawaii, and they decided to form a partnership and buy a boat. And they originally sailed out of Hawaii and then eventually out of Tahiti. Um, Weaver Levy, who had a Chinese actor, Chinese American actor who had been in a lot of films since the 1940s, was cast as Oliver. And uh, the first season it was Gardner and uh, Weaver as Adam Troy and Oliver Wendell Key. Um, 91 episodes were filmed. Um, the first season, 30. Uh, the accent was a little bit on action adventure, but there was always a theme of Adam Troy coming to the rescue of, uh, of someone, particularly helping out certain uh, damsels in distress. Um, McKay had, uh, had little acting experience when he came to Adventures of Paradise. He had been a photographer, he had been a male model, he had been a sculptor, he had uh, written poetry. He was under contract briefly at the MGM. He was in a series called Boots and Saddles, a syndicated western, uh, for one season. And then he came to Fox as a contract player. He did very little for a year. And then uh, I think Dominic Dunn and Martin Manulis discovered him in the, in the cafeteria. And Dominic went over and left the card for him and said, we're, uh, we're casting for the lead in this series. Well, they saw probably 100 actors. They tested, I think Dominic told me, 10. And he said that, frankly, Gardner McKay's test was not the best. Far from it. But he had something that none of the other actors had, including the other actors who were much more experienced than he was. He had a charisma. He had a presence. Uh, Peter Nelson told me that when he walked into the office to, to test that day, to meet everyone. Everybody turned their head because he was an incredibly handsome man and he had this great aura about him. Anyway, he was cast and uh, the, the series, as I mentioned, was shot at 20th Century Fox. Um, on the back lot, on the north east end of the back lot, adjacent to Beverly Hills High, was a an area, uh, a lagoon that they had built, and they bulldozed a uh, lagoon down about maybe three or four feet, and then cemented it with asphalt, and they added uh, city water to keep the algae from forming, and uh, that was the famous lagoon that was used for Ventures of Paris. It was called the Waterway, so it meandered a little bit. It was about one acre. All of the uh, shrubbery and plants and trees, which you can't see here, but you can get a closer look, were all uh, brought in from the Greens Department. They were in pots, and they were surrounded by smaller uh, foliage, and it really looked like a Tahitian village, but in reality it was all uh, made by the studio artisans. But it was incredible. The boat, there were four boats used in the television series. In this particular shot, the boat that was on the lagoon on the back lot, which the area was called the waterways, this was a, a, a prop. It was not a boat that sailed. In fact, if you see the, you don't see the top of the masts. Why? Because they're shorn. They resemble telephone poles in reality. So the camera never really panned up to, to reveal that. Um, this was a 65-foot boat. It was a replica. It was uh, a beautiful replica, but it never left the lagoon. It was um, on pillars in the water, stationary. And what, what they would do is they had another boat, which was in, in San Pedro, which is south of L.A., and they would go out in the, on the water maybe once or twice during the course of the, the season 
and shoot footage all day long. Now, Gardner McKay was an expert.